Hey guys, and welcome back to the Homemade Haven. We have been on quite the adventure for the past few days, and we wanted to take you guys along to update you guys on what's been going on. So about a week ago, I was out in the garden and just doing my garden chores and I noticed that there was something over by one of the beds. So when I got over there, I realized it was a little baby bunny. And when I say little, I mean little tiny baby bunny. So I went over and I looked around to see if I could find a rabbit den anywhere, if I could find other rabbits, um, if I could find mom, and I couldn't find anything. So it was the heat of the day. We have dogs, we have a cat, we live in the middle of the woods, so there's predators. And he looked like he was a little bit dehydrated and super hot, so I didn't know what to do with him. Um, I didn't want to just leave him out there and risk him dying, becoming too dehydrated or something finding him. So we made the decision to bring him inside. And we have been fostering a baby bunny for the past week. our little foster bunny. What's his name? Roger. Roger. Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit. So we have had this little guy for about a week now and we have been nursing him with a syringe and um, a solution that we've made up and he seems to be doing pretty well. He's still um, a little bit small for his age but he's He's made it a lot farther than we thought he might would make it, and our rabbit expert friends um, thought that he would make it. So we are very proud of how far he's come and how much he's grown. About three days later, while I was out working in the garden again, I noticed a noise, which was a screeching rabbit sound that we were familiar with because of our little bunny Roger here. Um, when we first picked him up and brought him in, he would scream and cry for his mom. And so when I heard that familiar sound, I looked around to see what was going on and I noticed that Haven, one of our dogs, um, had gotten a hold of another rabbit. So we ended up finding the rabbit den. Actually, Haven ended up finding the rabbit den. Exactly. And unfortunately, the rabbit that she had pulled out of it, she did kill, it did not make it. Um, so at that point, we were kind of wondering, what do we do now? Because now the den has been exposed. Um, it has the dog smell on it. We went over and saw that there was another rabbit that was outside of the hole. So we took a stick and guided him back into the hole so that we didn't get our scent on anything. Um, and then we kind of covered it back up 
like it was. Um, and then we set up a trail cam so that we could keep an eye on the hole to see if the mama bunny would come back. We weren't sure if she was going to be nervous because of the smells and because of the one being missing. So we kept an eye on them for a couple of days and the first night there was no sign of mama. So we were kind of nervous that we were going to have to intervene and um, bring these babies inside to raise them all. Um, but the next night, thankfully, mama showed up and she was there. She reset the little nest and um, cleaned it up and nursed the babies. And so at that point we were relieved that she had came back and was taking care of them. And so we just left them alone and kept taking care of our little Roger friend here. So today, um, whenever I went out to the garden again for my morning garden chores, I realized that Haven was over um, and she had something. And up until this point, I've been making sure to keep an eye on her and our other animals to make sure that they're staying away from this tree where the, the home was. Um, but I took my eyes off of her for one second and she got another baby rabbit. And this one did not make it as well. So now there were two rabbits that had been removed and killed. And um, we have the one that was out that we're fostering. Um, so I searched around to see if I could find any others because I just knew that this is not a safe space for them anymore. The dogs know where they're at. The scents are out there. And we weren't sure, you know, if mom would come back a second time after knowing that things had been um, discovered. So I looked around and I did find one more bunny. He was outside of the den and sitting there um, very shooken up and nervous. Obviously he had just been ripped out of the hole by a dog that killed another brother or sister. Um, so I made the hard decision to go ahead and bring that one in as well. So now we have two foster bunnies. This one's Benjamin. Our new guy is Benjamin and this one here is Roger. And we have no idea how to tell the gender of the rabbits, so we're just calling them both boys for now. After finding this other bunny, I think we realized why little Roger was in our garden the very first day. We think that he could have been the runt of the litter, and we know that um, rabbit mamas are very proactive if they notice anything that's different or new or strange about any of their babies, they will kick them out and they won't tend oh, to them okay. or take okay. care of them. Okay. <laughs> okay, Ben, stop. Stop, I'm gonna set you down for a second. So we think that little Roger here was the runt of the litter and that's why he was out that day. Um, so I'm glad that we did intervene because he probably would not have been tended to or taken care of. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the story. We have two foster rabbits now. We were not intending on keeping rabbits. We had tossed around the idea of maybe having some um, to make compost for our garden so we have a good sustainable um, source here on our farm for compost. Um, but we were not expecting to gain rabbits this way. We don't really know what our plan is for these bunnies. Um, we had hoped to release little Roger back out into the wild once he got bigger and stronger and was weaned off of the milk. Um, we're debating whether or not that's a great idea or not because they have been handled and they're starting to lose their fear of people. And, um, you know, our animals have been around sniffing them and stuff and I'm just not sure what the best move would be. So if you have ever rescued baby rabbits or if you are familiar with rescuing wild animals, please leave it in the comments below what you think the best option is. We're not totally against keeping them. Um, no, I think, I think we'll keep them. <laughs> Reagan is all for keeping them. And I'm, you know, 
either way. I, I, of course, would love for them to go be wild bunnies like they were made to be and intended to be. Um, but, you know, we wouldn't mind keeping them around as well. They could be great breeders for our rabbit stock if we ever decide to raise rabbits for meat or for compost or whatever um, the case might be. But um, we've got just a couple weeks to figure that out. So if you guys have any great suggestions, please leave it in the comments below. So we have mixed thoughts on their age. We read that if their ears are standing up and their fur is starting to stand up as well, their eyes are open, it seems like they can hear and see pretty well, um, that they are most likely between three to five weeks old. Um, now, of course, because this guy we think is the runt of the litter and he's been fed by us rather than mom, he is significantly smaller than his brother. So you can see the differences between them here. The one that was fed by mom a little bit longer is definitely a lot thicker, a lot healthier. Um, so it, they very well could be around that five week mark, um, which if you have any suggestions on how to age them or even how to tell their genders, please leave that in the comments below as well. This is totally new to us. We only have the knowledge of what we have read from um, Facebook groups and books and Google. So today our goal is to make a new habitat for these two little buddies um, because we had a box that was big enough for our one rabbit, but now we have two and one is significantly larger than the other. Oh my goodness, that's the cutest thing. Bunny kisses. Oh, and a bite. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, so we're gonna make them a new habitat today and we're gonna show you guys how we've been feeding them, what we've been feeding them, and just kind of give you a little insight of what our life has been like for the past week with a foster bunny. All right, so first off, we're going to start with finding a bigger box, which we have plenty of boxes because as you guys know, we have been moving and we're also getting a new Airbnb put together. So lots of boxes. This is how the moving process is going, which in our defense, our house is all set up. We have everything that we actually use every day in there. This is mostly like Christmas decor, seasonal decor, um, and some other things that we wanna keep out in the garage and workshop. We just need some shelving and better organization. Looking around, the only boxes that are any bigger and that would be good for them to stay in are ones that we're trying to use. We've actually been covering some ground for our berry patch that we wanna plant this fall. So I don't wanna use those boxes because I plan to put those out pretty soon, but we've got some Tupperwares that we've emptied out and they're just stacked in the corner. So I think that might be our best bet. You stay in here, buddy. No. These poor rabbits. We left them on the back porch for literally a minute. And Belle, our cat, jumped in the box with them. But everybody's okay. This is just going to be a lot harder than we thought to keep them. So what we're gonna do is come out here kind of near where their little den was and find some things to put inside this box. They really like to burrow and hide and stay safe. So. We're gonna find them some things that make them feel a little bit more comfortable. All right, so camera overheated, too hot today. But we collected some little things from around their den area and we're just setting this box up now. So we lined the bottom with some cardboard and we've got some straw and some big pieces of bark. And we took the fur and grass from where their den was, where their mom made him. Um, to put in here, so we'll see how they do. Looks 
pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. We actually have this lid that we made for a chicken brooder back when we were keeping baby chickens. And it's just a Tupperware lid that we have cut out the middle and put some hard wire cloth in with some zip ties. And so it doesn't fit this box exactly. We do have a bin that it does fit, but it's full of stuff right now. So we might eventually empty that box out and put the rabbits inside of that so it's just more secure. But for now, we're just gonna place this on top and put some weights on it to help keep the dogs and the cat out, hopefully. That should work. We bought some of this rabbit forage mix salad um, from PetSmart and it's full of all kinds of tasty looking dehydrated grass and fruits and vegetables. So we've just been adding a little bit of this to the box um, as the little ones are starting to rely less and less on milk. Um, they're starting to try some new things and they seem to like this. All right, so taking a break inside because it is so hot outside, my camera has overheated twice now. So um, we're getting ready to make up a bottle for the little one actually. Um, so I thought I'd show you guys what we've been feeding him. So in case you find a bunny that is in need of rescue, um, this is what we found online and what our bunny expert friends recommended us to use and it's been working well for us. It's obviously not as great as the mother's milk as you saw between the one that we rescued last week and the one we rescued today. The other one is significantly larger and just looks a lot more filled out. But um, we have been using kitten replacement milk. We found this at PetSmart and we have been just following the directions. It's like one part um, powder to two parts water, which we have been using our Berkey filtered water because obviously our tap water is probably garbage and not great for anyone. Um, and then we have been adding um, about three drops of this Vita Drop. It is rabbit minerals. We also found this at PetSmart. So it's got all of the um, vitamins and minerals that they need to make up for what they're not getting from their mom. And then we added a little bit of heavy whipping cream. This is to help with the fat content because rabbits need a lot of fat to grow really quickly and fast. So we've used a mixture of that. Um, the exact amount that we have used is about half a tablespoon of the powder milk, about three quarters of a tablespoon of the filtered water with like a quarter of a tablespoon. I'm sure there's correct math fraction terms for that, but this is, we've been using one tablespoon. Um, of heavy cream. So just um, enough to thicken it up a little bit with the heavy cream, but not too thick to get through our syringe and our bottle. So we've just been putting it into a little measuring cup, stirring it up really well, and then microwaving for like four seconds. So enough just to take the chill off of it because in the wild, obviously they're not used to cold milk. First week we had to use a little tiny syringe to feed our rabbit friend um, the bottle. He just was not used to that. So we literally just like drip, drop, drip, drop, drops onto his mouth and that's how he drank. Um, and he drank, he started off with about one of these um, the first couple days and then moved up to like two and two and a half. Now he is able to use our little bottle. We also found this at PetSmart. Um, and it came with all different kinds of tips on it. And we just cut the tip to fit his mouth and um, to have the right amount of flow out of it. So it's not too much to where he's drowning in milk, um, but it's not too slow to where he gets uninterested and doesn't wanna try nursing out of it. So I'm sure you could find all of this at your local pet supply warehouse or tractor supply. Um, you might have to look in like the kitten and puppy area to find some of the stuff, but you should be able to track it down if you need it. So our rabbit has not eaten in about four hours, so it's time to go ahead and feed him now. We've been trying to 
keep him on schedule about every four hours or so. And then at night, obviously, we sleep all night. So he goes about eight hours um, in between feedings and seems to be working okay. In the wild, the mom literally returns at nighttime for just a few minutes from what we have been able to see on our trail cam. So she's gone all day long and comes for maybe 20 minutes to, to nurse them. Um, and then she's gone again all throughout the next day. And she does this to help protect the babies from predators because if she's not around, then most creatures won't know that that den is there. Um, our dog just so happened to stumble upon it. I don't know if one was out and that's what caught her eye. Um, so unfortunately they were exposed, but happier news. Let's go feed these bunnies. Look who's home from work. Hey babe. Hello. We're just sharing with our friends about our, our new bunny additions. Oh, <laughs> I know the camera was going. <laughs> I was like, I know. Our imaginary <laughs> friends. <laughs> Saw you guys doing your thing. <laughs> so that's really about it for our rabbit story thus far. Hopefully we can continue to keep these guys alive and give you guys an update in a future video. So thank you guys for joining us. Be sure that you subscribe to keep up with the rest of our adventures here on the homestead. And to close out this video, please enjoy a montage of super cute bunny footage. We will see you guys next time. Bye.